So how much further is the group right now than this time of year ago? Uh, you know, it's, it's really kind of night and day, to be honest with you. You know, um, the expectations that we have now, a year later, you know, if you go back 365 days, we would always have to keep grinding on the expectation, keep grinding on what it's supposed to look like and how you're supposed to execute and things of that nature. So now, they're very conscientious. They know when it, it's not right. They know when it doesn't look good. They know when it doesn't feel right. And they know when the expectation is not being met. And we don't have a lot. We don't have to say a lot. And I think some older guys are stepping up on defense, even though we don't have a lot of them. And they're really, really trying to take it over. So um, those are all good signs. I'm talking to some of the guys that seem like they're saying it's more a knowledge thing than it is anything else. Just understanding what everybody else has to do, the fits, and if I do one thing, that guy does another thing, and sort of the trickle-down effect. It is. It is because defensive football is a puzzle. And there's 11 pieces to it. And not every single person on every single play is going to be right on every single inch of his turf. But as long as you have guys that obviously as a group understand where they're supposed to be, how they're supposed to fit, they can communicate and they'll play with a lot of effort and intensity. And that's how you play great defense. Great defense is, is it's not real rocket science. It's everybody doing their job. And what we preach to them is that bad defenses aren't usually because you're soft or, you know, these guys are competitive. It's usually because one guy, two guys, three guys on a call aren't where they're supposed to be. That creates holes in your defense. Coach, we, we talk in terms of things starting up front on the, on the defensive line, but Coach Fedora talks about if you had more packages to help the D-line, you might have could have stopped the run better. Can you give us an idea of what that might look like? Uh, just, you know, everything's about playing to win as a team. And there's just certain elements during a football game that, you know, if you're playing up by 30 points, which we were, quite a few times last year. There's elements in the game that dictate what we're going to play defensively. Uh, could we have been more aggressive at times? Absolutely. The bottom line for us is scoring defense. That's it. It's not about yards. It's not about passes. It's about how many points the opponent puts up. That's the line in the sand. So we were going to do whatever we had to do as a defense to make people not score points. It's that simple. So whether that's turnovers, whether that's a third down defense, you know, whether that's, um, you know, whatever whatever the scenario is, great red zone defense, um, that's where we had to excel. So were we better last year? Absolutely. Where we were we where we need to be? No. no. Is, it, is it too simple to say expanded packages would have had different results against Clemson and Baylor? Uh, no, that wouldn't be that easy to see. To say. Are there a couple guys on the defensive line that are standing out to you, the younger guys that <laughs> haven't played as much but should be impact players this year? Um, I'm really proud of Jalen Dalton and where he's coming. There's no question about it. Um, our defensive line has to have a capacity for boredom. That's what I tell them. Because down there, it's got to be a scenario where you're just doing it over and over and over, and then it just becomes muscle memory. They're getting there. Jalen Dalton's getting there. Nas Jones is getting better. Mikey Bart's had a great camp. Um, you know, so, and there's some other young guys coming on as well. And so, again, we're trying to build two to three deep in the defensive line. Some young guys got to help us. We're, at, we're seeing if Tamon Fox can play. We're going to see if Jason Strobridge can play. We're looking at all the different guys that are possibilities. So, is anybody just absolutely standing out that's a young guy right now? No, they're not. But there's certainly guys that are up for consideration for playing time. And it looks like Nas and Jalen are getting first-team reps inside. Both guys who both used to be three technique. Right. Now Nas that knows. Well, again, we're, we're trying to put our best, biggest, physical, most physical players on the field. So right now, that's where we feel like we're at. Uh, Nas is an extremely intelligent football player. He can play nose and three technique. Um, so that's always a luxury. So again, in the name of trying to get our best players and our biggest and most physical players on the field, that's where, we're, that's where we are right now. That doesn't mean that's where we'll be September 3rd. Where's Jalen made the, the most improvement from last year? Uh, his understanding of the defense. I think he's really, really becoming a more physical player and playing with strong hands, which you have to play down there. Uh, his pass rush is really, really an asset for him, obviously, because he's been a defensive end, so that would make sense. Uh, so just the physicality of the game, learning how to play down there, and learn how to play at a physical level because when you're 6'6", you know, your leverage isn't always great. 
Uh, so he's still learning to do that, but getting but much improved. How much lower is he now, especially when he gets off the ball? I'm sorry. How much that? lower is he now than he is when he gets off? The ball? Oh, his pad level when he comes off is night and day. You know, this we were just laughing over there. Jalen Dalton this time last year, in my mind, was absolutely 100% redshirt. There was no way he could play for me. And then all of a sudden, through the capacity of boredom and doing the same things over and over and over again, all of a sudden, week one, we're looking at him going, hey, this guy might have a chance. Week two, week three, by week four, he started. And we never look back. So that's the progression that young guys make. Some guys catch on to it fast, some don't. Uh, but that's a great example of a guy doing the same thing every day, grinding and finding a way to get on the field as a young guy. Along the lines of adding to the defense, Coach Fedora said you all will do the base install the first five days. How much of what begins on day six have the players been exposed to? Already? They've been exposed to all of it. So we got an extensive amount in the spring. So everything up to this point um, is obviously recall. The first five days has been more your meat and potatoes of the recall from the previous year. Uh, moving forward after the scrimmage tomorrow, then you're going to look at the installation of some other things that's not completely foreign or new. Uh, just maybe not as new as some of the other stuff. How many times did you go back and watch? Oh, good. Great bit. Great bit. Spent a lot of time. Along with all the other games as well. Can you ballpark how many times you watch? Um, probably eight to nine a piece. What do you think the takeaways were, especially in the games? Well, I think the takeaways were, were number one, I think that when you're starting to play elite offenses in the country, you get to the level of championship games. Uh, Baylor happened to be the number one offense in the country. Uh, the level of player in terms of athlete, you know, you, you, you've got to be, a, that's a different level of play. I'm just talking about from the athletes themselves in general. The second part is, and the takeaway is, that those become extremely physical games, regardless of whether they call themselves spread offenses or whatever they want to call themselves. They're very, very physical football teams. So we didn't match physicality. Uh, at times, we, you know, we got out, ran to the perimeter because maybe our tracking angles weren't as good as they needed to be. Uh, but the bottom line is, when you get to that level, then you have to up your game. We have to be better in every phase than we were, whether that's the physicality, whether that's tracking angles, whether that's execution. We got into the ACC championship game, and I felt like our defensive execution was poor. It wasn't about how many calls we had or did not have. Our execution was poor. So that is an example, again, of getting to that level, making sure those moments aren't too big. Okay, those moments can't be too big, and these guys can't think that it's okay just to arrive and go home and clap your hands and say that was a great season. So all of those would take great for us. What concerns do you have a linebacker? Uh, what concerns us at linebacker? Yeah, what, what concerns do you have? I don't have linebacker. any. I don't have any. I feel, I, feel good about I feel good about it. I really do. I think they're learning. and. That's a hard position because there's a lot of moving parts. I think we have really smart guys in the room. We've got some young guys coming on. Um, you know, Shot, Shot and Shaq, obviously, um, were great players and very smart. But you got to remember, they went into this defense last year. Shaq never even played the position. Uh, so now you got guys that are very similar in nature in a lot of ways. They've just been in it for six or seven different installs with us. So I don't have uh, I don't have any qualms for the linebacker. I think uh, we got a long long way to go, but I, I don't have any worries. All right. Thank you.